For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or become an official student at patreon.com forward slash Daxter Bells. All right, guys, this is one of these uh, problems that's very simple, but it's very hard to explain if I'm not in person with you guys, but I'm going to give it a shot. So basically, they're giving you F1, F2, and F3, and they're telling you find the magnitude of the force. Now, it's not really hard to do. It's just time consuming the way I've been showing you how to do this kind of problems. But we're going to try and do this in a quick way. I'm trying to explain it to you because this is very simple. So basically, we have three moments here. The moment caused by F3, the moment caused by F2, the moment caused by F1, and we have this moment caused by S4, so to say. The moment one, moment two, moment three, and moment four. Now, moment one, moment two, and moment three are very easy to find. You know the distance in between one or the other, and you know the magnitude of the forces. So you know that the moment causes the distance between them times the magnitude of the force. So the moment on F1 is equal to 100 times 0.2. So that will be 20 um, Newton meters of uh, moment. However, in what direction is it going? Now, by the right-hand rule, since it's doing this, you know that it's going on to the negative J direction. So the moment 1 is negative 20 in the J. Using the uh, same logic, you're going to see that F2 is 120 times 0.2, which is 24. Now the direction is going in the positive x direction, which is 24 in the i. Now how do I know it's going on the positive x direction? The right hand rule is making it go that way. And last but not least is F3, which is creating the third moment, which is 0.2 times the third one, which is 80, which will give F3 a magnitude of 16. And you know it's going, since it's doing this, it's going straight down, which is in the negative k direction. Now, the only one that's a little bit um, complicated and it might be a little tricky is this one. Now, the magnitude of this one is this distance right here times the force. And that will be the magnitude of this of uh, this particular moment. However, is if you notice, this one's not really sitting in any plane. Now, by the right hand rule, you know that this one's doing something like this and it's going in this direction. This direction goes from this point to this point. So knowing that, basically what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find a univector that goes on that direction, univector u. And to do that, I'm going to call this point A and I'm going to call this point B. Now, you know the distance from here to here is going to be the magnitude of this one, which is going to be 0.3, which is this distance times the cosine of 30. 0.3 times the cosine of 30. That's that distance. Times the magnitude of the force, which is 150. And that's going to give you the magnitude of this moment. However, you need the direction. So you need to multiply it by this univector that goes from A to B, since I'm calling this one A and I'm calling this one B. Now, to do that, you need to find A and B in order to be able to find this, um, this univector. Now, you know that A sits at negative 0.2 in the I, plus 0.2 in the J, plus 0.3 in the K. And B sits at 0 on the i, plus 0 on the j, plus 0.3 in the k. So if you wanted to find the univector that goes from A to B, first you need to find the vector, the vector that goes from A to B by subtracting B my, uh, A, my, A, by subtracting A from B, which is 0.2i 
minus 0.2j. And the univector is equal to the vector AB over the magnitude. So you divide 0.2 Actually, you, we need to find the magnitude. The magnitude of AB is easy to find. is 0.2 square plus 0.2 square all square rooted. And that should be about 0.283. So by dividing 0.2 by 0.283, you get 0.706 in the i. And 0.2 by 0.283 again, you get minus 0.706 in the j. So this is a unit vector. So all you need to do is multiply this value by this val by uh, this whole um, univector, and you're gonna get the vector for this moment, which is equal to 27.5 i minus 27.5 j. Turn the page on my notes, and then all you have to do is you have to add this one, add this one, add this one, and add this vector to get the sum of the moments. And the sum of the moments should be equal to 51.5 in the i, minus 47.5 in the j, minus 16 in the k. So that's the Cartesian vector form and the coordinate direction angles. For the coordinate direction angles, you need to find the magnitude the magnitude is found by doing this square plus this square plus this square, all square rooted. And that equals to 71.9 kilonewton meters. And to find the coordinate direction angles, you gotta do the cosine inverses of, cosine inverse of the X component over the magnitude, cosine inverse of the Y component over the magnitude, and cosine inverse of the C component over the magnitude. Once you do that, you're gonna get that this is equal to 44.25 degrees. This is equal to 131.35 degrees. And this is equal to 102.8 degrees. And this is the magnitude and these are the coordinate direction angles. <coughs> That'll give you the answer to the first one. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's do the second one. The second one is actually much simpler than I thought initially. I thought I was going to have to do some complicated equation. But I realized that the only thing that they're basically giving you the, the sum of the, of the moments. And they're telling you F1, F2, and F3 are missing. But they're give, F4 remains the same. So it's pretty simple. So let me build this one in a way that is easy to see. So you know that you got the moment one, the moment two, the moment three, and the moment four. If you add them all up, they're going to add up to the total, which is what's given, which is 50i minus 45j minus 20k. And now all you got to do is fill in the blanks. You know that the moment on the first one is minus 0.2 times f1. You know that the moment on the second one is 0.2 times f2. This is how we, we found these. And the moment on the third one is minus 0.2 times f3. And the moment on the fourth one remains the same because that force didn't change. So that is 27.5 i minus 27.5 j. So basically from here you can build your equations. Let me move this a little bit over here. So from here you can build your equations. So you have the sum in the axis is 0 0.2 f2 plus 27.5 is equal to 50. So F2, with some simple algebra, you're going to see that is equal to 112.5 newtons. The second one is minus 0.2. F1 
minus 27.5 is equal to negative 45. And some simple algebra will tell you that F1 is equal to 87.5 newtons. And the third one says that negative 0.2 F3 is equal to negative 20, which means that F3 is equal to 100 newtons. So final answer for F3, for F2, and for F1.